far as the property. I'm gonna advise you as you can exit the property. Hi, I'm Detective Judo Rodriguez, batch number 180 from Horizon City Police Department. I represent the Crossman and the Walmart property. I'm gonna advise you if you could exit the property. Okay, sir, I'm not gonna give you another warning. If not, I'm gonna have to get you for criminal trespass. Do you understand? Hey, on five, KPIX Hives Kenny Choi is live in Vacaville with the story of a black man who was threatened with arrest. Kenny? We've obtained emails from Walmart which state that its investigation found no evidence of racial profiling. We met the man today who shot this video you're about to see to get his side of the story. Well, we're going to stand right here while you shop. Joshua Lane, a father of two and married, was shopping for a movie projector for his kids at Walmart in Vacaville on March 28th. So I went around to another aisle and I noticed that they're trailing me again. Lane, who works as a longshoreman, says a conversation started initially with one man working security. I told him, you know, I'm a working man, uh, showed him pictures of the wife and kids, kind of apologized, but he told me, you fit the description. What's your name? I don't have one. We moved to another aisle, continued speaking. That's when the lady uh, followed me again. This happened at least three times, three different aisles. Hello, Walmart. My name is Andre. I live in Horizon City, Texas. And um, I'm making this video this evening because uh, of an uh, incident that uh, occurred back on, um, I'm sorry, I didn't have my receipt out of my wallet. Um, the incident occurred back on January 5th at, uh, just after 10.30, it was between 10.30 and 10.40. Um, my receipt ID number, I'll put it down below in the comments section and um, also on the uh, video here. But the ID number is uh, 7RD89612YZ54. And um, Like I said, I'm, I'm contacting Walmart via this video because uh, I have concerns about something I experienced with uh, an individual uh, police officer that was representing Walmart. Uh, that's what he told me. You'll see in, in the video shortly. Uh, his name was Detective Rodriguez, badge number 180. He said he was representing Walmart. Um, long story short, he he expelled me from the store under threat of arrest. Um, after thinking things over for the past uh, couple days, I believe that I was subjected to, I don't know if it was conscious or subconscious, but I believe I was subjected to uh, bias based on race and national origin. Um, one of the main reasons I think that is just because on the receipt, You'll see, I, I finished paying for my groceries, which was $65.69. And, uh, and that was at 10.27, um, at uh, almost 10.28 p.m. And within minutes, less than 10 minutes, I was approached by the police and, and accused of some sort of wrongdoing. Um, the police officer even admitted he wasn't even quite sure what exactly I was doing, but it just didn't look right and he wanted me gone. You don't have to believe me, you'll see in the video in just a second here. But um, I believe that if I didn't look the way I did, you know, I, I, uh, I'm a lower income person, I don't have fancy clothes, I don't have, maybe my clothes even look kind of like I'm a bum or whatever, but anyway, the, how I dress is how I dress. Um, and uh, I, I believe that that might've been a factor um, but regardless, I mean, I, I've been shopping at Walmart for a couple decades now, ever since I was a teenager and I was getting my first paychecks as a teenager at my first job and, um, never had a problem until January 5th, 2022. Um, 
I, again, I just want to make this video because I feel it's the best way to communicate with Walmart corporate headquarters in Bentonville, Arkansas. Um, I'm just trying to think of what else to say here. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of details. Um, I'm sure that there's going to be a lot of discussions between myself and the Walmart company. But um, like I said, you'll see in this video I'm about to show you uh, what happened. It's a very short video, but it does show, you know, when I was expelled from the store. Um, basically, I don't feel that Detective Rodriguez, as a representative of Walmart, um, took the time to determine the totality of the circumstances um, based on an objective and unbiased, you know, standard. I believe that I was expelled quickly without any, um, you know, proper determination of the totality of the circumstances because of the way I look. That's what I believe. Um, I wish it didn't have to come to this. I, I don't like making this video. I don't like making accusations against people, but uh, I made an open records request with the police department. One of the first things that raised my suspicions about what's going on here in regards to my expulsion from the store is that Detective Rodriguez, apparently from the open record that I received, uh, made no notation in the computer-aided dispatch system, the CAD system, uh, with the Horizon City Police Department. So it appears to me that he's possibly trying to conceal the incident as if it never even happened. And um, that's one of the main reasons I uh, am also having my suspicions aroused about, you know, um, systemic bias and and uh, whether it's subconscious or conscious, I, I'm not sure. I can't prove that, but I do know that I was quickly expelled from the store um, with with very little explanation as to why. And uh, you'll see in the video, it, it doesn't quite make sense because I was told that I could come back, but at the same time, I was told that if I didn't leave immediately, I'd be arrested. Um, another thing that also raised my suspicion about uh, systemic bias against customers at Walmart is just a couple stories that I've heard um, through the news. Um, one, one was an incident in Colorado. Apparently there was certain products that were being locked up um, uh, that minorities, you know, people of color tend to purchase, uh, that those items were being deliberately locked up. And um, supposedly that was being done because that segment of the population has more shoplifters than people who are not of that you know minority subgroup. And then the other story that really hit home with me, and uh, I feel really parallels what happened on January 5th with me here in Horizon City, is there was this other uh, black man who was, um, he's, he's from the San Francisco Bay Area, and uh, he's actually a family man. I happen to be a bachelor, but what really surprised me, he, he was a family man, and apparently he was in the store with his family, I believe. And while he was shopping, the uh, management was apparently targeting him and, and uh, you know, following him around and acting, you know, very, act, basically treating him like he was uh, a suspicious criminal or potential shoplifter. And you'll see that in this video shortly as well. Um, that story was from uh, approximately a year ago, and it was from the San Francisco Bay Area. And um, so based on those incidents that happened at uh, two other Walmart stores in, in the country, and then what happened to me on January 5th, which until it happened to me, honestly, I would have never, I, <laughs> I never would have thought that I ever, ever had a problem at Walmart. I've shopped there the majority of my adult life, a life, like I've said, and I've never had a problem before. Um, but things happen quickly in life sometimes. So anyway, uh, Detective Rodriguez quickly expelled me from the store. I don't believe that he had um, an objective reason based on the totality of the circumstances to do so. And I don't believe that what he did was in accordance of, it was in accordance with um, Walmart's corporate policy regarding um, you know, systemic bias and and uh, just treating people equally based on their appearance 
uh, and their race, their national origin, and their perceived economic status. Um, so let me just show you the, the quick video of what happened with me and Detective Rodriguez. And then also you can review what happened to this uh, black man in the Bay Area, uh, San Francisco Bay Area in San Francisco. And um, Walmart Corporate can decide for itself um, whether they believe what's going on here with me or not. Um, I mean, honestly, I, I have no reason to make this stuff up. And um, like I said, I've, I've been a, a very wall, a loyal Walmart customer for, for over two decades, and I have no intention on starting trouble with Walmart. I'm, I'm, re I'm really making this video because I've, for the past, you know, 48 or 72 hours, I've truly thought things over, and I really believe that what happened to me on January 5th in Horizon City, Texas, at the Super Walmart in Horizon City, Texas, I believe was that my um, my quick and hasty um, threat of arrest, you know, that if I didn't leave, I'd be arrested for trespassing. I believe that was based on the way I look. So anyway, let's go out and get on with the uh, video clips that I've been discussing. And uh, Walmart Corporate can contact me. Um, I put, I'm gonna put all my information in the comment section down below. And um, yeah, I, I hope that Walmart Corporate can, uh, you know, take a serious look at, at this incident. Again, the receipt number that I had uh, is ID number 7RD89612. Uh, YZ54. And um, if you could, you know, just, uh, I'm not saying that you have to immediately believe me or think that I'm making some, you know, that I'm trying to sensationalize something or exaggerate anything. I, I, I want Walmart corporate to, you know, take this step by step and, and look at what they determine to be the facts and uh, decide for themselves what is what. But the fact that I'm making this video right now, I hope they take that into consideration is that I'm putting myself out there. Um, now, I, I already do have uh, a presence on social media. I have a small YouTube channel, but that has nothing to do with, you know, stuff like this, like calling out, you know, private businesses like Walmart. I just happen to be using my YouTube channel because this is a communication method, but um, and I also want to use this communication method, this video, to reach out to any, uh, anybody else throughout the country or any other country that Walmart operates in. Um, if they want to, you know, contact me, uh, I'll leave my contact information down below in the comments section. And um, so basically that's, that's why I'm making this video, putting it on my YouTube channel and using that as a method to contact Walmart so that anybody else who might have had this issue can... Uh, also come to the table and, you know, contact me and or Walmart and bring their story up as well if, if something like this has happened. So anyway, that's the issue. I was uh, expelled from the Walmart store in Horizon City, Texas by a Horizon City, Texas police officer who was, as he claims in the video, he was representing Walmart. So as a Walmart representative and as a police officer, he quickly expelled me from the store. I believe it was for biased reasons based on race, national origin, or you know, perceived race, perceived national origin, or perceived uh, economic status. And, um, and that, that's why the, 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 he didn't use the same procedures he would have used possibly with somebody else who didn't look like me and didn't determine the totality of the circumstances as he should have. Um, another thing I want to say quickly before I uh, move into the other video clips, I know that this video has been almost 13 minutes now. I meant it to be short, but I obviously I had a few things to say here. But um, the last thing I just want to leave Walmart corporate with is that, uh, you know, if, if Walmart corporate 
wants to investigate my criminal record, they're free to do so. I'll give them any documents that they request or they can look it up on their own. But, you know, you're, what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is, is that when you do look at that criminal record that I have, you'll find no incidences of shoplifting at Walmart or any other store. So I think that that's another key issue to keep in mind is that it's not as if I was involved in what I was accused of on January 5th in the past or anything like that. I've never been involved in any negative incidents at any Walmart and I've never been trespassed from a Walmart before. Um, this was completely out of the blue and blindsided me and I keep looking at this receipt because I see approximately $66 of my hard-earned money being spent at Walmart, and all I'm asking is to be treated the same as any other customer. That's why I'm making this video. So um, thank you for watching this. Thank you for listening to me. I'll be in touch with Walmart Corporate and with the Horizon City, Texas Police Department. And um, you know, I, I hope that, that all of us can move forward and, and uh, make some positive uh, steps out of this negative incident. Or well, at least I consider it a negative incident. I don't know how Walmart's gonna consider it or how the Horizon City Police Department feels about it, but that's my side of the story. All right, thank you guys, and here's the video clips. As far as the property, I'm gonna advise you as you can exit the property. Hi, I'm Detective Judo Rodriguez, batch number 180 from Horizon City Police Department. I represent the Prosper and the Walmart property. I'm gonna advise you if you could exit the property. Okay, sir, I'm not gonna give you another warning. If not, I'm gonna to have to get you for criminal trespass. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Um, but what, what, what am I being accused sir, of? Sir, you could actually exit the property. They, said, they actually said that you're either exchanging property. I have no idea if you're actually doing that. So I'm asking you here exactly if you were, you say you weren't. But me, as as the officer representing the property, I'm gonna ask you if you can actually exit the property. Can I, but I can come and shop again, right? Yeah, yeah. But just for right now, you could just exit. Well, I just want to make sure that it's clear that all I was doing was just I have no weighing. Idea. So when, later on, whenever they review the cameras, so I'm gonna have to bring it to the APs, the asset protection. They're okay. gonna review the cameras that is approximately 22, 37 hours. Okay, you're not gonna find anything. I, I was just weighing I'm just, my. I'm just telling you right now. Okay. I'm not saying you did anything. That's right. why I came up and asked you. Right. You understand? This is nothing personal. This is just because of the world we live in. Now, okay. I don't know what I'm being accused of. Nobody's... A, that's but, why I came up to you and asked you. Right. Okay. Unfortunately, and I know this feels awkward. Sir, I'm, but I'm not... I'm, I'm coming up to you just talking to you. I understand. I appreciate that. So, the thing is, if you could exit the property right yes, now... Yes, I will leave. I just wanted to make... We're going to close already. Yes, I, I know it's about to close, yeah. So, there, there's okay, no problem. Okay, exit the property. Okay, so I just want to let you know that I didn't okay, try to do anything. Do. Okay. Five. KPIX Hives Kenny Choi is live in Vacaville with the story of a black man who was threatened with arrest. Kenny? We've obtained emails from Walmart which state that its investigation found no evidence of racial profiling. We met the man today who shot this video you're about to see to get his side of the story. Well, we're going to stand right here while you shop. Joshua Lane, a father of two and married, was shopping for a movie projector for his kids at Walmart in Vacaville on March 28th. So I went around to another aisle and I noticed that they're trailing me again. Lane, who works as a longshoreman, says a conversation started initially with one man working security. I told him, you know, I'm a working man, uh, showed him pictures of the wife and kids, kind of apologized, but he told me, you fit the description. What's your name? I don't have one. We moved to another aisle, continued speaking. That's when the lady uh, Follow me again. This happened at least three times, three different aisles. Customer inside who is being hostile and threatening. And she asked me to leave. Once she said those words, I knew she was on the phone as well. Uh, ceased everything. 
I headed towards the accident. We looked at the Vacaville Police Department incident report, which stated Lane was told about trespassing laws. The officer also told me to go ahead and leave the area. Don't come back. This is private property. I had to leave the parking lot and everything at that point. When Lane and his wife contacted Walmart claiming racial profiling, the company emailed them saying that they were unable to substantiate that allegation. I'm a family man. I'm trying to teach my son here and my daughter as well. You know, they're going to have to grow up in this city and be leaders as well. So I'm trying to show them by example. We obtained an email from Walmart saying its investigation involves a former employee, but it did not provide further details when we reached out to the company today. It's very real. It's everywhere. It needs to be talked about. Um, the more asylum we are about it, the more that it's going to continue to happen. Now, Lane ended up going back to the Walmart location with two members of the NAACP a week and a half after that incident. He's told that uh, he is welcomed back there by a store manager, but he has not gone back after that day saying that he feels very uncomfortable uh, being in that store. Ken and Liz? Yeah, it's hard to watch that, that cell phone video. Kenny, you mentioned there was a meeting. Any other details to come out of that? Yeah, he met with the store manager uh, at that Walmart location, and he says, according to Lane, he says that that meeting took place in the freezer storage room in that Walmart here in Vacaville. Uh, it was an uncomfortable situation for him. We've also reached out to Walmart asking for a comment about that part of the story. We have not yet heard back.